Good morning. Who makes the earth drunk, God or Babylon? Interesting question. Our reading today is at Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 6 to 8. If you have an interest in some of those end-time messages in the book of Revelation, this some of these are going to be quite interesting to you because here we have the root of a message in there. But let's take a look at it. Flee from the midst of Babylon, and everyone save his life. Do not be cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He shall recompense her. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations are deranged. Babylon has suddenly fallen and been destroyed. Wail for her. Take balm for her pain. Perhaps she may be healed. Now over here at the end of the Bible in Revelation 18, 1 to 4, there's a very interesting message. Also in Revelation 14, it talks about God's judgment against Babylon. And in 18, 1 to 4, it talks about the eminence of Babylon's being finally judged, finally ended. So in Revelation 18, God presents a final call out of Babylon. Babylon's going to be destroyed, and so in his mercy, he makes one last call to come out, come out of her, my people. And the interesting thing is that in Revelation 18, that event is foreshadowed exactly right here. This is the root passage back here at Jeremiah chapter 51. Now, the call is for everyone, everyone to get out of Babylon while you still can. As many as are willing to leave her, get out now. This is the end. There it is. And many peoples were conquered by Babylon. In fact, the last four or five chapters, we've seen judgments against these 10 different nations. And in fact, these passages have spoken of several people coming back from captivity. Israel, Judah, Moab, the Ammonites, and the Elamites. There's five nations right there. Now, although many people have been partially or wholly assimilated to Babylon and its culture and its ways and its religions, some of them still keep memory and still have an allegiance and an openness to their own past. Babylon's error makes the nations drunk and insensible. And yet, there's a way in which God uses that error to confront his people with truth. So yes, Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand. And yet, this passage that says that also says that she made them drunk with, quote, her, quote, wine. It's her wine. So remember that God does not initiate evil, but he brings good in spite of evil. He permitted Babylon to infect the whole earth with its error, so as to clarify that brokenness to which self-service leads. One of the key necessities of God's people at the end of time is to understand what Babylon is so that they may separate from her, separate completely. Babylon in the last days is spiritual, not literal. It's an end-time blend of church and state, of civil and religious power exercised over people. And to use Revelation 18 verse 13 language, we're speaking of control over the, quote, bodies and souls of men, unquote. And it's very clear from Revelation 18 that a coalition of sorts exists at the end of time between governments, between religious entities, merchant classes, the wealthy, the powerful. There's kind of a final cadre of, of groups and people, a small group that's in control, or at least they think they're in control, but God's in ultimate control. And it all comes tumbling down. So change is coming. Come out of her, my people. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, you are calling us. You're calling us to find the exits while we still can and to get out of Babylon. So help us, Lord, to be faithful. Help us to be inquisitive and get an understanding of what Babylon is, what is the way out of her, and be our leader, please, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayers and being our guide and our helper and our strengthener. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So Babylon made all the earth drunk, but God used her stubbornness to show the power of truth. God be with you today.